Jessie V. And today I'm very excited for this video because we're going to be talking about two cats in pop culture that you most likely know. I would be really surprised if you didn't. The first cat, as you can tell by today's title, is the Cheshire Cat. I want to know if I'm pronouncing it right. Is it Cheshire Cat or Cheshire Cat? I always get comments down below saying that I've pronounced something wrong, so please forgive me ahead of time. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I adored Alice in Wonderland, but there was always something about the scenes with the Cheshire Cat that really affected me. I think when I was really young, I even had nightmares about him, and now I kind of love his character. So we're gonna talk about some creepy things with him, some of his history. It's actually super interesting. And then we will move on to the second cat in pop culture, but I'll, uh, I'll surprise you with that one. Also, don't forget, if you want to win this backdrop, <laughs> subscribe to this channel, put your notification bell on, head over to my Instagram, follow me there, and DM me the Christmas tree emoji. That's all you have to do. I don't know why I always do this, like I'm telling you guys a secret, <laughs> as if nobody else can hear. All right, let's discuss the Cheshire Cat. Now, we all know the Cheshire Cat is from Lewis Carell's Alice in Wonderland. If you've ever wondered what species the Cheshire Cat is in real life, it's apparently a tabby British short hair cat. And listen, I'm personally not the biggest fan of cats. I'm more of a dog person, but I gotta say, these cats are pretty cute. The Cheshire Cat is a fictional character, a cat notable for its broad grin and its ability to disappear and reappear at will. When you hear Cheshire Cat, what's the first thing that you think of? Because I know for me, it has always been his big smile. The Cheshire Cat is the cat of the Duchess. Alice first meets it in chapter six from Alice's adventures in Wonderland. When she leaves the Duchess and finds it in a tree, it constantly grins and can disappear and reappear. Sometimes it disappears and leaves its grin behind. I know when I was younger watching Alice in Wonderland, the fact that the cat could disappear, I almost wondered if maybe it was all in Alice's head, like maybe it wasn't actually there. Maybe she was kind of going insane after being in Wonderland. The Cheshire Cat is the only character in Wonderland who actually listens to Alice. With his remarks, he teaches Alice the rules of Wonderland. He gives her insight in how things work down there. I know this is totally random, but if you listen to the Cheshire Cat's voice, he sounds just like the voice of Winnie the Pooh. A Cheshire Cat. I improve my appetite. Is that actually the case? Because if that's the case, that is so crazy how he plays such opposite characters because Winnie the Pooh is so lovable and sweet and funny and the Cheshire Cat is like mysterious and creepy. So let's start with how the Cheshire Cat got his name. If you go way back in history, there was a common saying that was to grin like a Cheshire Cat. So if somebody was smiling really wide, someone would be like, oh, you're grinning like a Cheshire Cat. It was just like a super common phrase back then. So maybe he liked that saying and wanted to make an actual character out of it. Now, he also could have got his inspiration from cheese, which I know sounds really weird. But a long time ago in England, in the county of Cheshire, they were known for their dairy production, particularly their cheese. They would have a practice of producing cheeses into the shape of a grinning cat. And that's how they would like sell and market their cheeses. They would shape it into a grinning cat and people would be so intrigued by them. And the last possible inspiration that he could have gotten for the Cheshire Cat is the carving at St. Wilfred's Church. There's a church that has stood since the 12th century where Carell's father used to preach. A carving of a grinning cat peeks out from above the church's main entrance. So when Carell was a little boy and went to that church almost every single week, that image of the cat might have like been put into his brain and that's why he wanted to make a character out of it. So there's so many different reasons from his life that he could have made this character, but it has been said to be one of the creepiest Disney characters ever made. And when the movie Alice in Wonderland first came out, it was a subject of kids' fears. I know I have some friends in real life that when they were little, they just couldn't watch the movie because that part really scared them. And now I just think he's so cool. Now, there is a Mandela effect that I quickly want to mention that does blow my mind. So everyone knows the famous line from the Cheshire Cat. What we all believe is that he says, we're all mad here. And think about it, there's so much merch with that saying on it. People have gotten tattoos with that saying. We're all mad here has become like the quote from the movie. But if you go back and watch the movie, 
he never said that. His exact words were, most everyone is mad here. So he doesn't say we're all mad here, he says most everyone. What? So people are currently freaking out about this on the internet, they don't know how they got it so messed up, and guys that is why Mandela effects really freak me out. <laughs> so let me know down below what you remembered. Okay, so let's move on to the next cat in pop culture, it is Garfield. If you don't know what Garfield is, come on! He is like the most popular comic book cat ever. Not comic book comic strip. Jim Davis's first Garfield comic strip debuted on June 19th, 1978 in 41 newspapers. The antics of a cranky, overweight orange cat quickly drew fans. Part of the comic strip's success may be that it's so apolitical. It talks about loving food and naps and hating work and Mondays. It's the exact opposite of a New Yorker cartoon. So people instantly fell in love with the Garfield comics because people had never seen anything like it before. So so we have a list of what Garfield likes. <laughs> it says lasagna, sweet foods, naps, climbing trees, and Pookie the teddy bear. So like I said, everything about Garfield people just found relatable. So let's move on to the darker parts of Garfield. There was this one comic strip that was released that was super strange. Usually Garfield comics were really funny and uplifting and people would laugh hysterically, but one day he came out with a Garfield comic that was dark and almost depressing pressing and it made you just feel strange after reading it. So we're gonna look through that comic strip together. This came out on October 23rd, 1989, so it's pretty old. This is how it starts. Burr, there's a chill in here this morning. What an eerie sensation. This doesn't feel like home. John? Odie? Anybody home? I'm alone. You have no idea how alone you are, Garfield. <laughs> What the heck was that? Oh, there was like a growl noise behind my backdrop. That's so scary. Ooh, I'm calm, I'm calm, I'm calm. Let's continue this. <laughs> of course this would happen during a creepy video. Steady Garfield. There must be a good reason why the house is empty. John must be at the grocery. And then it shows the outside of his house and it says for sale. My home has been abandoned. No one lived here for years. But that means I haven't lived here for years. What's that? John, Opie, you're home. Hello Garfield, have some food. Locked fast within a time when he no longer exists, Garfield grapples with his greatest fear, loneliness. What does this even mean? <laughs> like people who read this were like, what? It doesn't fully make sense. It leaves you with a weird feeling. People were just wondering why this was made. Before we get going, I just want to show you creepy Garfield. So there have been people on the internet who have taken our lovely Garfield and turned him into something creepier. This creepy Garfield is known as I Am Sorry John. It's a series of Garfield inspired artwork in which Garfield is depicted as a horror creature stalking his owner John. A lot of these drawings were created by a horror artist by the name of William Burke. So let's go through some of these very creepy drawings. First we have John, where is my lasagna? and he's like this creepy spider figure, ew! And poor John is like hiding behind a wall like, please don't find me. Then we have John, I can smell you, and he's like this bug monster thing, ew! And John once again is hiding behind like a desk or something. Then we have, the world is gonna end John, and he's this tall creepy cat with a long tongue. So um, yeah, poor John in all of these- <laughs> Ty! My heart, my heart, my heart. <laughs> oh my goodness. My heart is beating so much. <laughs> okay, I just looked behind my backdrop and a box fell off of my shelf. Don't know how. My heart is beating so fast right now. So I'm gonna end the video. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so crazy that that was all caught on camera. Okay. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave your comments on the Cheshire Cat and Garfield down below. I hope you have a better day than I just am having right now. And uh, I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye!